<laughs> hey folks, uh, welcome back to the channel, yeah, Flash Flash. Uh, I'm John here from Wild Boar Cycling and this is... Uh, Brian. Brian, no, it looks like you're getting ready to go out for a ride. We've got some... Uh, can, you, can you see me? Can, can I see you? Can, can you see me now? Uh, yeah. Okay, can, can you see me now? Um, hey, so uh, really what I want to talk about today is... Man, yeah, what do you want to talk about today? I want to talk about this high-vis neon stuff that seems to be marketed everywhere and um, having some doubts about really uh, what the manufacturers um, are encouraging us to do. Interesting. So uh, let's sit back and uh, take this apart a little bit. Cool, thank you. So, okay. so, I, yeah, wait, so wait, I, was science, I got a science teacher hat on here. Hey, hey, can so, you still see us? <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe. Okay. Uh, science teacher hat on here. Yeah. So um, you have a hypothesis. Uh, I have a hypothesis. What's your hypothesis? And my hypothesis is that I'm not so sure that the high vis stuff is uh, the end all be all of keeping you safe when you're out riding. Interesting. And there's some interesting articles now, because I went to science. Science, yeah. I went to research, okay? I didn't go to manufacturers and that kind of thing. I looked at like, so what, what does some of the literature say about this? Yeah. Oh, see, see, again, science teacher hat. Uh, Researcher hat. You know, I wish we had the budget to do actual experiments mm -hmm. with Wild Boy Cycling. Yeah. Uh, but you know, people don't who don't do science. They don't know that this this is the first part of science. Yeah. Is literature review, Lit which review. is my least favorite part of science. You um, know what? But <laughs> you uh, know, both of us have advanced degrees, so we've done research and we know what lit reviews do. So, uh, but one of the things in my lit review that came out is, wow, uh, maybe. Uh, there is no difference between wearing flashy high vis or your sporty, really cool kit that makes you look really fast. That that's counterintuitive. That is counterintuitive, yeah. but the science says that drivers, when they're passing you, this is research, don't pay attention to whether you're wearing neon or whether you're wearing your your fancy, you know, race cut kit. So, Brian, one of the articles that you know I I, I read and looked at when I when I did my research uh, was saying that gosh, it really doesn't matter what you're wearing. Uh, the conclusion: uh, bicycling bicyclist clothing choice may be important in reducing the risk of a motor vehicle collision. The protective effect of visibility aids vary due to light conditions and non-bicyclist risk factors. They also need to be considered. So, you know, while the manufacturers say, oh yeah, this is gonna be the best thing for you to do, um, maybe that's not the, the total answer. That's, so that's an interesting finding. Uh, and we should probably put a link to this article yeah, I'll somewhere. Yeah, I'll put the links down to the articles in the bottom of the description. So I have a, I have a counter proposal. So if this is saying that clothing choice uh, has little to no safety impacts, mm -hmm. how about clothing choice, how it impacts um, the way you feel. Like if you feel safer, are you safer? Huh. Right? That's, Maybe? That could be really difficult to measure. I, yeah. Yeah, let me... Did, I did you find anything else? Well, I, I did want to jump to something else but that uh, counter um, that is counter to what they talked about in the different clothing. Um, and another article, uh, one of the findings said that it doesn't depend on the clothing, it's where the high visibility material is located. Oh, so if it's located on a knee or an ankle or a shoe, it's that motion that also um, indicates to the drivers that they need to be more cautious when around you. And you know, anecdotally, from driving, what happens when you see a cargo bike loaded full of kids? Yeah, you give them some space. You do give them some space. Um, I, I do think that one of the things that is really critical, though, uh, when we go back to this high-vis stuff, is the inclusion, and I noticed when we were out riding the day that you didn't have this on, is a front and rear uh, light source, a flashing light. Uh, one of the reasons for the front is to keep people from turning in front of you, and gosh, I, you know, here's, here's a manufacturer, and I, I do like these particular ones here. They're quite bright, and I've got a red one for the rear and uh, a white one for the front. I think that adds a lot to visibility, and some of the science also said that from the National uh, Institute of Tran NTSB, National Transportation Safety Board, 
is that, hey, do you have some kind of light source being emitted while you're out on your ride? So, you know, that's a couple of things to think about. Um, yeah, I was, so, yeah, I'm, I'm guilty with, cause I don't like, I'll go to charge it and then it's, it's not on my bike and then I forget to put it on. Uh, but I found it interesting when I was looking into some of this that there are places in the world, uh, I think the UK specifically, where you're not allowed to have flashing <laughs> bike lights. Uh, I think, and I've, what I've read is the rationale behind that is the flashing makes it hard for depth perception for the drivers who see you. If it's flashing, they can't tell how far away you are. Um, and so that could be a consideration. Uh, there's a reason they have that law, you know? True, um, very true. If you want to be visible, you should be visible. I definitely normally ride with a front and rear mm -hmm. headlight, yeah. um, unless I'm being lazy and didn't put it on. Well, and, 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 and to conclude this brief conversation about high vis, because I've just been a skeptic about all the, all the marketing material, and you know, I, I see a lot of riders out with a high vis gear on, a lot of riders, so they've marketed it really well and they can sell a lot of that stuff. Um, but I, I think there's a big diff here when you look at the time of day and the light factors that are going on around you. This is not, this is not the end all. Right. Uh, I think the addition of front and rear lights add, add a lot to dry, uh, rider safety and there's some good science behind that. Now, we're, we're talking science, folks. We're not talking about what we, our opinions. So, yeah. Uh, once again, this is a conversation that I'll be really interested to see what you folks out there in YouTube land and are riding. Uh, what do you think about all this? Well, I'm, so my head is going back to what I said earlier about like how the rider feels. If the rider mm -hmm. feels safer, maybe yep. it's safer. I, I might actually, I'd like to see someone do a study on that. I don't think I've seen a study on this. No. Because if you're riding and you're wearing high vis and you're relying on the high vis to keep you safe, then you're probably not being as defensive in your riding. Yeah. And I avoided, actually today, on my ride today, I avoided getting hit by a car because I'm hyper vigilant. I'm looking in rear view mirrors at driver's eyes to yep. see if they see me. I'm like reading the road, predicting 10 steps ahead uh, because I don't feel safe on the road and I gotta keep myself safe. So if you're relying on this to keep you safe, then maybe you're putting your faith in the wrong spot. And, and I like what you just said, Brian. I really do think that uh, defensive riding is really important. Uh, I think it's all lumped together. Being a defensive rider, making sure you're anticipating you know, driver mistakes. Who's gonna open that door in front of you? Wearing something that's gonna be visible. You don't need the high vis, but you know, just something maybe that's to catch attention. And then do the front and rear lights is maybe the perfect three-point solution to all this and keeping you safe when out there riding. But mm -hmm. I really want to hear what you all folks think out there in YouTube land and tell us about your experiences out riding. And <laughs> time of day is really critical. Yeah, mm. yeah. Hey, well, thanks. Well, hopefully uh, this uh, little short one here is uh, thought-provoking. It doesn't give you many answers, but I tell you what, I, I am just a total skeptic when it comes to some of the marketing material that comes out and um, you know, that's in my closet, this is my closet, and I'm thinking, okay, yeah. I don't have any high vis. No, you don't have any high vis. So maybe that answers the question. Okay, well, what are we gonna do now? We're gonna, uh, we're gonna go out, ride. Have fun. Yeah, have fun. Keep the rubber side down. down. Uh, maybe be defensive now when yeah. you're out riding, when you're having fun. And uh, think about front and rear um, lighting so that you can be seen and observe and of course folks be defensive out there smash that like subscribe and notify button so uh next time um we'll be chatting about something new and i think next time we're going to probably follow up with that continuum of, of cargo comfort cruiser bike mm. conversation because we we really went deep in the weeds here last week uh, about rowdy rough and rapid so stay tuned for something new about that okay cool all right, folks, uh, see you all next time. Thanks right. for tuning in.